Hey guys, Jason McCoy here. I'm here with Juan, Juan Wick from IG and Craig as well. And uh, we're gonna talk about some helmet setups for night vision. Uh, as everybody can see here, there's one helmet that stands out among everyone else that looks bare as all get out. And that is my Guardian Tactical Bump Helmet here. Well, ballistic helmet. And uh, I need to upgrade some stuff and <laughs> you guys are gonna help me out and <laughs> teach me a little bit what I need to actually put on this helmet. Why don't you take it away, Juan? Let me know how you got your setup. All right, so um, I have my two bump helmets here. Across from yours, I have my ballistic helmet. Um, we can start with, with my setup here. This is my Carbon SF by um, Opscore. I'm running, let's see what you got. So you have no ears on here. You're not, not obligated to run ears on the unit, um, but you want to make sure that whatever um, hearing protection that you have is compatible with your setup, right? Correct. So, um, I chose to run dedicated um, ears and comms on this setup just so I can just grab it and go. Gotcha. Right? Um, and when I say grab it and go, it doesn't mean that I'm, you know, grabbing it to go into battle. Um, it just means that sometimes I'm running around and I just need, you know, a guy says, Craig says, hey, let's go do this. Or, you know, and I'm like, okay, just grab this and we're, we're good to go. Right? Um, so I'm running the Opscore amps. These are a little bit um, on the higher end of things. Um, other options are the Peltors. Um, as far as mount, you have the Wilcox G24 as well. I think everyone here has that uniformly. These are probably the industry standard of, of mounts, dovetail mounts for binocular and monocular night vision. Um, let's see. So we have my SNS Precision Max mount on here. So this is my lights, you can use it for umbrella lighting, you can use it when you're searching for stuff. A lot of times when I'm done shooting at night, I need to police stuff, this comes in handy. Just turn it on and I can see everything and I can police stuff. If I drop something, I can find it. Um, very good tool to be able to actually articulate this and move it into directions where your light is advantageous to whatever you're trying to do at the time, right? Um, everyone has different reasons why they're getting into night vision. So there is no set way to do things. It just has to coordinate with what you're doing and make sense for your purpose. Yeah, right? I thought it was going to be, oh, yeah, I'm going to get night vision. That's going to be it. I didn't realize the money you spend and actually oh, yeah. the Wilcox, the J-Arms, all the different mounts and the vampire lights and things like this. And it, it, It's a rabbit hole for sure. It, it is, and it's, it's not cheap. You know, no, there is not. no There is no cheap option. <laughs> you know, there's, and there's nothing that's what I consider affordable in night vision, right? It's just all <laughs> expensive. Everything that you look at is expensive. So one thing that you always see with guys running around training with night vision, go into detail about these lights here. What do they do? So turn to the rear. This is an IR strobe. It can be visible as well. So you have visible here. I can then flip that and now I turn it on again. You see nothing, but um, it's actually visible in the infrared spectrum. These basically allow us to see where other individuals are at, right? So, right? so we're out there. Again, this may apply to tactical teams a little bit differently because, you know, none of us currently are in tactical teams, right? Correct. But we do go out and shoot at night. Right. So, for example, later on when we go shoot, you are going to be in different places. You're going to be moving around. We're going to be on a big property, right? It's always good to know where everyone is at so we can maintain safety throughout the range, right? So that's how that applies to point. guys like us. So yes, for tactical teams, it may have its purpose, but for us, it keeps us safe, right? Let's just know that, you know, Jason is down there, Craig is over there, I can send rounds that way. Exactly. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. So I don't want to take one in the back of the head. Correct. <laughs> so I was noticing um, also too, you guys um, are running the battery packs and not just regular batteries in your nods. Um, Correct. Mine, is it set up, and is my PBS-14 compatible with a pack, or It is should not. I? As okay. far as my knowledge goes, it is not. Um, Craig, you can talk about your, set, your setup, because he runs his setup a little bit different. It's, it, they look identical. Uh, so if you, if you don't mind bringing yours up, Craig. So we look identical, and don't get me right. wrong, I copy a lot of Craig's shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, you'll see he's, he's running the max mount, he's running the amps. You know, he's running the G24s, the 31s. Gotcha. Um, we have the Mac Block Tarzias up front. So it's almost identical. Same strobe, everything, right? However, Craig does something different than I do. 
Craig runs a battery in his PVS31. I do not, so you can talk about that. Uh, sometimes I'll use it when I'm not um, actually wearing the helmet. Yeah. And then um, I'll just run the battery and I can hold it like binoculars and just kind of look okay. and kind of survey the area, um, stuff like that. Um, but no, um, but if when I'm running the battery pack, the reason why I run it is just to get more time, more, more hours without having to constantly switch out the batteries up front, as well as use it as a counterbalance um, because when you get weight up front, it starts to yep. kind of sag down. So by putting some weight back here, it kind of evens it out. And also when you're running night vision for a long periods of time, sometimes we'll shoot for a long time, uh, a few hours during the evening and your neck will get Sore, sore yeah. and worn out. Um, just for, I'll, I'll notice the next day I'm just like, gosh, damn, did I do a workout or something? <laughs> but really, it's just from you know wearing these without uh, a counterweight. Um, so yeah, hundred percent. So it's a piggyback off of that. So I do not run batteries in these. So if I if I open these up right now, there will be no batteries in here. Hopefully, you don't make me a liar. <laughs> I should put one in there for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, so anyway, there's no batteries in here. Um, and because with the 31s, you're able to connect these in and That's run it. these without batteries, right? So you can just take all your power from the battery pack. And what that does for me is now I can maintain these without batteries because if you leave batteries in here, you could potentially damage your system, right? So it's always advised not to leave batteries in your in your system gotcha. so having a system that's compatible with a battery pack i can leave my batteries in here still be ready to go on the fly um i don't even disconnect them i leave them straight plugged in and uh there are no batteries in here that can you know that can leak and, and cause damage to my internals here gotcha. but i can always just click on at any point in time and i'm good to go yeah that makes sense i mean like i said i'm a newbie that was the first thing that was advised to me do yeah. not ever leave batteries in here all the time so just so you notice that most of our systems, if you, if you lift yours, Craig, as well, they're running these caps up here, right? So these specifically are MacBook Tarsiers, right? However, he has these on his, um, which, which provide the same level of protection. Uh, these are a little bit more complicated, a little bit more um, convenient, because I can open these up like an iris. However, these, I think, are an invaluable, whatever system you go with, some type of protection for your lenses. Um, when we do simunition training, I can take a hit here with sim training and not damage my tubes. But also, if my tubes were accidental, I can turn them on right now, right? Close this one up. So I can turn them on, and if, there, if there's a lot of light in the, in the environment, it protects my tubes, gotcha. right? So it's probably on right now. I can keep pressing it. You know, it's probably on, off, whichever one I'll check later. However, it's protected because the amount of light coming in is reduced by these lenses. So it's a pinhole camera, you can still see an image, however you're protected. So when you invest, you know, I'm pretty sure your pockets probably hurt, you know, getting Already. your- Already. Yeah. <laughs> that happened to you recently. Correct. So the other day someone, you know, had my nods and they kept it, they turned it on, didn't turn it off. They probably didn't even know how to turn it off, right? Uh, they just wanted to check it out. And then 24 hours later, I realized that my <laughs> nods were on for 24 hours. Oh my goodness. Why am I not freaking out? Because they were protected. I have the battery pack, which allows me to run for extended time, so I know it will run all that time. However, I'm protected up here, so I know that I have minimum damage, or the damage that could have been done was minimized by having these caps. Now, are those caps available for the PVS 14s as well? Correct, yes, yes. yes. So you go to MacBook, and there are other companies, you can make them yourself. You know, it's MacBook is a very expensive solution, but there are other solutions right. out there, even, even do-it-yourself ones, you know, but not a, not a bad uh, thing to have on top there. It gives you uh, multiple layers of protection for your investment. Gotcha. Yep. Sage, right, debris, anything like that? Yep. That's it. Well, let's go do the fun stuff. Let's go shoot some of this. Yeah, for sure. I'm with it. Let's Thank you guys for coming in. Definitely. Take care. Take care.